with that, I'm going to bring onto the red carpet our next author, Jonathan Collier. He is the author of The Craft Cannabis Revolution. Hello. So The Craft Cannabis Revolution, succeed as a small business in a giant industry, giant and growing industry. First of all, let's set the stage. What is The Craft Cannabis Revolution? Um, well, as we all know, it, the cannabis is coming online as a giant industry, but there's a whole uh, community of people that have been carrying the tradition for years and years, often generations, three generations. Mm -hmm. So these are small growers living in the hills or growing in their basements or in garages since it hasn't been legal all that long. And they're struggling to find a way to actually enter in the legal marketplace. It's interesting when you say craft cannabis, I think of craft beer, like craft breweries, which obviously is huge. When I, what I, I'm not a huge beer drinker, but what I know about beer is that like there is something different about the taste of craft beer and the experience of craft beer. Is there something different about the experience of craft cannabis versus big market cannabis? Absolutely. So with a lot of these businesses that are moving in, they're throwing a lot of money in it and really it's becoming a commodity. Uh, meanwhile, there's people that have really spent years honing their craft, really putting a lot of love and care, not only in the product, but in their lands, in their homesteads, and in their communities. And when they do that, it really reflects into the product. So it's small batch, it's artisanal, it's boutique. So really what we're hoping to do is kind of replicate that. And it took about 50, 60 years for craft beer to come online, and we're hoping that uh, we can actually preserve this tradition from the get-go. So we'll see the bulk weed come out. We'll see the commoditized versions come out. I'm picturing Monsanto weed. Yes, it's uh, <laughs> happening. So, um, which it is what it is. We understand that. But there's always people that really believe in quality product and people that really care. So that's basically what the book is about. And, uh, like, I understand the the sort of call to arms and community, what do you actually do for people that are part of the craft cannabis revolution? Um, so I've been in the industry for more than 20 years, 24 years now. Also started at five with Monica. <laughs> a little <laughs> older than that. But um, yeah, so for the last four or five years, it's really been a lot of political work, the community advocacy work. Um, even in a place as perceived liberal as California is, um, there's still a lot of resistance. There's a lot of misperception. There's a lot of myths that, uh, you know, a we have the criminal black market, you know, shadow side of it. So really it's been engaging with the community, with politicians, elected officials, a lot of community and business leaders, and really connecting with them and showing that we're actually really considerate people too that really do have a lot of uh, a culture that really believes that this is a medicinal healing plant and how can we do that? Not only basically what it does for the human body, but also how we treat the land. Um, so that is really important for us. So that's a lot of the work I've been doing is trying to um, build those bridges and really create acceptance on the, on the greater level. Wow, that's such an important mission. Um, I'm going to take some audience questions here for you. Uh, this one is from Michael in Phoenix. And Michael says, I know that excuses are only opportunities to tackle and overcome, but I'm an 18-wheeler truck driver. How does one find the time to complete their book? If I'm not rolling, I don't eat. So I know you were busy through your whole process. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I sit on a lot of board of directors. I have a lot of uh, positions that I fulfill. So it was, it was. I don't know how I found the time. But I do know that once I committed to the program, and, and the program is such a wonderful process. It's really well thought out. It's very detailed. Excellent coach, excellent support throughout the organization. And I think that alongside with a lot of the ways that you subtly structured it just really it gets you through the program. So um, uh, I think resistance got, is futile. <laughs> resistance so is futile. Tell me about your actual writing process. Did you some people write in a condensed chunk like mm -hmm. they'll write in three days. Some people write a little bit every day. What was your writing process? Well, I think the most important point is the way that you set it up is you create a really focused outline of what you want to do and what you want to say. And when that's focused, when you actually do the bulk of the work, it's just a matter of you have the skeleton in place, so you have the structure, and then it's just a matter of taking the time. And I, I'm one of the, I'm what you call a serger, so I like to do 
a lot of work in a small amount of time. That's what I do too. I've like written all my books in like three days. Absolutely. So it was just really easy. At that point, you just flush it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find staying in your pajamas for three days is also a big part of the piece of the puzzle. Be somewhere beautiful, stay in your pajamas, have lots of food that's healthy around you and just write and bang it out. So Michael, I know if you're not rolling, you don't eat. But hopefully you could find 24 to 48 hours in there to take off. I know they make you. You can't be ride it, driving all the time. There's laws. Um, the other thing some of our authors do, I don't know if you did this, but maybe you know someone who did. Um, some of our authors actually talk their books. So if you have the structure, they'll just go through and actually do a chapter on a recording, which could be another thing that our friend Michael wants to try. Uh, let's see. I am going to take another question for you. And let's see. This one's from Leslie from New Jersey. And she says, what was the hardest part of writing your book? And how did you manage through the tough moments? He's going to tell us weed, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it was just trying to condense so much information. It's, it's one of those things that you don't realize how much history, expertise, education that you have. And then you're trying to put it in a really small book and then you realize that there's so much and I think uh, one of the things that helps you with that is realizing that you can always write a second. That is the answer. Well here is the first and it is definitely the first of more to come. Jonathan Collier's The Craft Cannabis Revolution. You know you're curious. Congratulations. Thank you Jonathan for your book.